What is up, YouTube? So today we are going to do another Diablo 4 video regarding how does it answer Path of Exile's build customizability. So in every single PoE player's lifetime, they will open up the tree when they first start out, and then they'll be like looking at this. Oh, this is not too bad. I'm going to spend a few passive points. Let's see. And then they start zooming out a little bit and zooming out a little bit more, and they're like, what is going on? And then they can't even zoom out all the way because there's stuff on top and they just look around and they all F4 out of the game or if they're a very determined individual they will go look online for a build but this is probably one of the biggest barriers of entry for Path of Exile for a lot of players and if you look at it my tree has a lot of circles it's very confusing there's even some stuff that comes out of it at the edge but Diablo 4 is actually copying the system but with a lot more simplicity and this is known as the Paragon board and we're going to go over exactly how Diablo 4 is trying to get that build customizability and distinguish itself from Diablo 3 which was a piece of shit. Oh wait, maybe that's a little bit harsh. But this is Diablo 4's answer to the Path of Exile's passive skill tree and this is what the actual passive skill tree looks like when you zoom it out all the way. Then the Paragon tree is unlocked at level 50 so during the beta we weren't really able to see exactly how the paragon tree looked like i think if you did the closed beta end game some people might know better how it actually works or what it looks like so this is the heart of diablo 4's game build customization outside of the skill tree the skill tree is kind of like the gem and gem socket system in poe you can choose the gem links that you want, the gem or skill gems that you want to use, and you can choose what support gems by choosing one of the branches that come out of the skill tree. So the paragon tree is kind of the passive skill tree, and then the actual skill tree in Diablo 4 is like the skill gem and gem support system in Path of Exile. And this is a massive, massive improvement over Diablo 3's Paragon system with infinite levels. If you ever played Diablo 3 and you tried any sort of greater rift pushing, you would know that people would be botting Paragon and then they would get infinite power. But in Diablo 4, the Paragon is capped from one of the best game directors of all time, Joe Shelley. I don't really know who the hell that is, but they do say we've looked at lessons learned from previous games and Paragon is capped and this is actually a good thing. So what exactly is the Paragon board? So the Paragon board, you start at the center of the board. So this is like the center right here, I'm assuming, or maybe it's here. I'm not really sure where the center of the board is in this scenario. But basically, you make selections radiating outwards with connecting tiles. So you come out and then you try to find a way to get to the edge of the board. You can see right here, there's a gate. And you'll earn four Paragon points per level until level 100. And I do think you do get additional Paragon points from completing zones. I did see that as one of the end goals of uh, finishing the ran down in a certain zone. So we're not really sure exactly how many Paragon points we have. In the screenshot I found, this guy says he has 195 available points. So we might get more than 200 points. This is very, very unknown at the moment. And there are a lot of different type of tiles that you can kind of think of that as different type of nodes in the Path of Exile skill tree. So you have travel points, you have big notables. So there's a lot of different things that are also on the Paragon board, but you can definitely see from first glance, this is a lot simpler than Path of Exile system. And that is a good thing for players who don't want that complicated of an experience. So you do reach the gate node on the board's four edges. So you can see right here, there's a little gate over here. And then you can attach another Paragon board. So the best way to think of this is like a cluster jewel setup. So you kind of get another, uh, obviously this is nowhere near as big as another Paragon board. So there's that sort of customizability in terms that you want to reach the edge of the board. So the Paragon board has gone through a lot of different iterations. I think this was first announced in December 2021 where they showed us the first glimpse of the board. And at the start, there was no real artwork and they pretty much just had little circles and filler shapes. And this board is 21 times 21 tiles. And then in July 2022, they did a circular mock-up and this board actually looks pretty good and it's 19 by 19, so it's slightly smaller. And then the most recent one they showed in August 2022 is a square in shape and it's also 19 by 19. I do think that 
This circular one looks a little bit better. It's kind of easier to see where it starts off of. This one, I can't really tell where the star of the board is. So not really sure what's going on here. So I'm assuming that the star of the board is here. Not 100% sure. So what are the different type of tiles? So there's four different type of tiles. There's the common tiles, and these provide small stat boost. So you can see right here, plus five strength. So these are kind of like the Path of Exile travel nodes, like the plus 10 dex, plus 10 dex, plus 10 intelligence. And then there's the magic tiles that provide a potent, more diverse set of benefits. So this can be like plus 10 fire resistance. And then there's going to be the rare tiles that provide significant boosts in power. So this is kind of like grants 10 fury per kill. And then you can also see that they have requirements for these. So this requires you to have 175 strength, 125 willpower, and this gives you plus 8% increased maximum fury. So wait, I think this gives you 8% increased maximum fury if you reach these requirements. So you can kind of see like the magic nodes are kind of like these travel nodes like Chaos Dot Multi or like 11 Chaos Res, 11 Chaos Res. And then the rare tiles are like these notables that give you like a lot of stuff like 5% life right here or 12% damage. But then these rare ones in Diablo actually has these conditional requirements in order to satisfy this thing that you get. And then there are also the legendary tiles and these provide a new legendary power to the character. So these are kind of like the super, super strong notables. And these are an example. While your Fury is above 50%, you deal 30% more damage. So I think there's only probably like a couple of these in each of these tiles. So right here, it's kind of hard to really tell what it looks like because... But in this mock-up, you can kind of see... I'm not really sure where the legendary tile... Maybe there are these golden ones. But it's kind of hard to really tell exactly how many of these tiles there will be. Because you kind of look at the mock-up, it's all over the place. And I'm assuming there's going to be a couple legendary tiles on each Paragon board. Now next up we have Glyphs, and I do think that Glyphs is a, a pretty cool system. So this is kind of similar to Threshold Jewels and Path of Exile. So you can see right here you have these Threshold Jewels and these Circles. And Diablo 4 kind of has like a little baby version of this, and this is known as a Socket Paragon Tile. And players can insert a Glyph into these sockets, so this is kind of like the Jewel in Path of Exile. So these grant you a bonus based on how many tiles are activated within the glyph radius. So you'll see right here that there's a little circle here, or right here, or right here, this red thing. And they'll give you a bonus based on how many tiles you have active there. So right here, this one, this rare one says radius size large. For every 10 willpower purchased within range, you deal 31.5% increased overpower damage. And then you also gain strength from each willpower purchased within range. So you, at this point, you want to try to pick up all the nodes that have willpower. And the glyphs have levels. So you can see right here, this thing is a level 15 glyph. And a lot of people think that when you level up the glyph, you'll be able to increase the radius. Now also, since there's going to be multiple glyph sockets in a Paragon board, they also have this UI that allows you to store the glyphs and attach it on future boards. So in this screenshot, it does show that you have quite a few glyphs. So it does make me think that maybe the Paragon board will have quite a few sockets. Now, this is the next part that I do think is the interesting part of the whole system, which is you can attach a new Paragon board. So when you reach the gate at the edge over here, you can put another Paragon board. Now, from this new Paragon board, you want to work towards another gate or you want to work towards the legendary nodes because the legendary tiles are the most powerful ones. Now, something that comes up is how are these Paragon boards actually generated and are they actually preset? And can you actually customize the board through your own gameplay? Like, can you add a legendary tile to the board or can you add more rare tiles? Can you change the uh, stat bonus of the common tiles? So this is a lot of stuff that's not really known. I try to look online for as much information as possible, but there seems to be no information unless you want to break an NDA. Now, for these boards, you can rotate it because you want to rotate the board so you have the access to the certain tiles that you want. So say you have a legendary tile over here, you want to rotate it over if you're trying to connect it over here so that you can have the shortest path to the legendary tiles. And you can see right here in this mock-up of the UI, they have attached board and rotate board. And this is kind of an interesting system. And this lets you select the board that you want to attach. 
So kind of, I'm afraid that the system could be a little convoluted because you could theoretically just keep making a beeline to the gate and then you could just have a board within a board within a board and that's going to be a pretty messy looking sort of UI. Now overall, like I said, I think one of the biggest questions is how we obtain these new boards. Are these boards preset? It's very possible that in every single season, Blizzard will slightly change up the boards and it's kind of like the Path of Exile's passive skill tree being changed a little bit. And can we actually customize the board? I know in Path of Exile, you can't really customize your passive skill tree. You can kind of customize, you can customize the cluster jewels. So I kind of think of the cluster jewels as attaching a sort of paragon board that you can customize. And in the future, will there be bigger boards? Because I think in 19 by 19, it doesn't really look like there's that much choice in these boards a lot of times. Like sometimes if you're trying to get to the gate node, you kind of just want to make a beeline for it, especially if you want to try to attach as many Paragon boards as possible. But I do think that this does address Diablo 3's horrendous Paragon system. If you don't really know what the Paragon system was like, in Diablo 3, you are pretty much only putting in points for generic stat increases like attack speed, cooldown reduction, critical hit chance, critical damage, or some life or percent damage nodes. So this is definitely a nice improvement over Diablo 3's Paragon system. And it kind of strikes this nice balance between Path of Exile and Diablo 3, where it's not completely overwhelming. It's not like if you look at this skill tree, you're like, I don't want to play the game anymore. And it's more like, oh, this kind of makes sense, but it still has this little bit of customization that I can personally apply. And it's kind of cool. So... It does seem like Blizzard has taken a lot of notes from Path of Exile. They do have the Cluster Jewels with the additional Paragon boards, and they also have the Threshold Jewels with the Socket Glyphs. So it's kind of nice to see. There's still a lot of unanswered questions. If you do know exactly how you actually get these boards and how these boards are generated, let me know down in the comments below, and also let me know what you think about this whole Paragon board system. I personally think it's okay. It's some customization, but it's going to be nowhere near the amount of depth that Path of Exile offers, but that is perfectly fine because these two games do have a different target audience in the end. But thanks for watching, everyone. Be sure to like and subscribe, and see you next time. Bye! Stay